The whole deal with vocalization, as we shall, we shall see, is that there needs to be a continuous sort of column of air produced here. The steadier, the better. And that column of air comes up through here into a, a specialized sphincter that we call the vocal folds, right? And so inside the bottom of the thyroid cartilage and kind of connected with the cricoid, the cricoid cartilage are the vocal folds. And over the course of evolutionary time, the vocal folds have actually re-evolved in numerous species. So uh, mammals and our kind of vocal cords is not the, the first and only time that creatures have learned how to squeeze their air column and produce vibration. Um, but, uh, but whether you're talking about a dinosaur a syrinx or a, uh, or a uh, parrot uh, or a, a, a human, or a wolf, as, as, we'll, as we'll see in the images, um, what you're doing is you're having some kind of adduction, some kind of closure here that is very subtle and is able to produce a series of, of harmonics in the upward column of air. And traditionally, we think of this as like almost like a factory floor where the air is transported up the vocal column and then is vibrated and then what you get is a series of conditioning steps to that sound as it goes out of the the, the mouth and vocal column so as we'll see in a, 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 perhaps in a little bit if you were to chop off the neck at the vocal column at the, at the top of the larynx you would not hear a human voice you'd hear something like ha hey, what's that like this? It sounds a little bit like uh, an artificial larynx, right? The, the, the humanness of the voice comes from the shaping of the voice through the pharynx, through the, the vocal pharynx, right? So that's maybe the top of this is the kind of the pharynx in a functional sense, uh, we, we might say, we might use the term formants, form, ant like like form ant um, and the sort of ways of shaping and, and conditioning the voice and this is how we create uh distinctions in the the the, the harmonics of the sound when we go and then we go all of that is the same pitch in the larynx it's the shape of my pharynx that was changing Right, um, so that's a simplest and that's a simplistic version. Um, but what I was saying is that is that like we think of this as a linear progression, but actually, when the when the vocal folds create that vibration, it travels down as well as up. So there are vibrations that go upward through the mouth, but there are also vibrations that then go back down into the rest of the body. And this is why resonance happens both up here, but also down here, right? Vocal resonance is a whole body phenomenon, not just a thing shaped by the pharynx. This is important, this is very important, but if it were just about, um, this space up here, you would not be able to uh, to get as much. Uh, uh, you would not be able to hear as much in the voice as you do. So imagine for a moment a kind of a human interaction, which has transpired through the course of human history. Let's go to camera two here. Um, imagine that uh, you are. in the nighttime and you do not have a source of light and you're at the edge of your village and 
someone approaches. And this is actually the scene that is at the very beginning of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Someone approaches at night, the other is not known, and you're the guard of the village. And you say, show yourself, uh, how do I know who you are? Uh, in Shakespeare, the, 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 the first command given in, in the beginning of, the, of Hamlet is unfold thyself. Unfold thyself. And, uh, and that's the sort of beginning of the whole play. <laughs> Everything unfolding from there. But uh, we, I think we lose sight in this day and age of how important it is to know someone by the sound of their voice. Um, and how important that is to our sense of self. Uh, as a result, right? So you can infer in that dark moment that you're imagining, you can probably, from the sound of a voice, infer the size of the body. You can probably infer the emotional state of the person. Not perfectly in either case, but you can probably get a sense of the resonant volume that is currently speaking to you and what its current autonomic state is. Is it in a state of excitement and readiness and aggression, or is it in a state of, uh, of calm and routine interaction, right? That's something you can immediately infer from a voice, even if you don't know the voice. How much more sophisticated if you know the voice? Now imagine something a bit more modern. Imagine you're, you're, you're having a phone conversation with a family member or a close friend. And you get on the phone with them. And the question is, how long do you think it takes for you to get a, a pretty good idea of what kind of a day they're having? You know, uh, 10 seconds, right? How much information is packed into the voice? How much of self is encoded? in the voice. Um, that is, uh, again, sort of a, a sense of what you are actually working with when you work with this. You're not just working with a factory for producing vibrations for the sake of someone's professional career. You are working with the self. Uh, 